Here are seven creative maps to have fun with your friends. Presented by Fortnite Master. For this video, we found a variety of fun and creative maps. They range from shooter classics like Team Deathmatch and Free For All to some more creative ideas like movement, parkour, and minigame maps. Whatever your taste, you should be able to find something you can enjoy with friends. And speaking of friends, shout out to the Visionary One for help finding and testing these courses with us. Drop them a follow on Twitch if you can. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. This first map is a ton of fun. It's Fortnite's version of CSGO surfing, and it's done pretty well. There are six levels, each of which has its own unique surfing obstacles. The goal is to slide and jump on each obstacle, maintaining as much momentum as possible so you have enough speed to make it to the end. This course is pretty difficult, so here are a couple of tips that we learned. You need to launch off the boost pads differently for different levels in the course. For example, just walking off the boost will give you the least distance, but it's still the right choice for some levels. Jumping and landing on the boost will give you slightly more distance. For the most distance, which can even be overkill for some levels, walk onto the boost and jump as soon as you hit it. Difficulty aside, this course is a ton of fun to play with friends. Just be warned, the competition can get intense. The feeling of being stuck on an early level while your friends are moving on to bigger and better levels can be tough, but that frustration turns into satisfaction when you finally beat it, so no worries. After you beat this course, you'll be happy to find out the creator made a version 2 as well. Now go play part 2. And for the second version, they upped the bar with some unique additions like surfing off trees and shooting enemies while gliding and jumping from one platform to the next. The next course we chose is a solid team deathmatch map. If you ever just want to hop into a map with friends and have gun battles without all of the crazy building that comes with Fortnite, this map is for you. In fact, using natural cover and movement instead of relying on building is a nice refresher from the normal game mode. There are weapon spawns at the bottom of each side, so you can grab a basic loadout to start. An AR, shotgun, and SMG. And just like most good TDM maps, there are unique weapons and item spawns at certain locations, in case you want to customize your loadout further. There are sniper spawns on top of two towers in the middle, deagle spawns on the ground level near the middle, and several other utility and healing item spawns like boogie bombs, stinks, shields, and medkits. Overall, this map feels like a really solid take on Team Deathmatch, with a lot of natural cover and some intuitive weapon spawns. One thing we do want to mention, however, is that this map will work best with teams of four or more on each side. Otherwise, spawn camping can get a little annoying because you don't respawn with your weapons. The third course we chose is this parkour course themed after the game The Floor is Lava. There are eight levels in total, each with its own theme. Basically, the floor is lava, so you must parkour your way from obstacle to obstacle to get to the end of each level, without touching the floor, of course. This parkour course is a medium difficulty, meaning you shouldn't have too much trouble hopping in and beating it with your friends. The real competition is whoever can finish the course first. We also love the theme of this course in general. The floor is lava is a nostalgic game for us, so it's fun to see it made this way. The themes for each of the levels just adds to its quality. It's cool to finally see what it would look like if our school was filled with lava and we had to parkour from locker to locker to avoid it, because we've definitely imagined it before. The fourth course we chose is this different take on the Battle Royale experience. It's essentially a smaller version of a Battle Royale limited to this lost island, with the storm slowly closing in over 10 minutes. You drop out of the bus at the beginning and need to loot and farm up before you can fight anything. We chose this one because we felt the map was well designed and the experience felt like a quality one. Everything fits onto the Lost Island theme really well, from the chest locations to the environment pieces. We also like the fact that you don't start with mats, but you can farm almost anything on the map, making it feel more balanced and like a real battle royale experience. This map is the perfect option if you're looking for a smaller scaled battle royale experience with your friends. Instead of squatting up together, maybe it's time to test your skills against each other and finally see who is the best of the best. Next up, we have Speedy's box fighting map. In case you haven't heard of him, Speedy Gonzalez has become a big name in the competitive Fortnite scene, often finding new techniques and giving quality analysis of gameplay. Check him out if you haven't, he makes some great content. Onto the map. To start, choose your loadout from the plethora of choices available. 
Then, hop on a geyser and fly over to one of the floating platforms with your friends. Now, just box up, count down, and start the fight. Turtling and box fighting have become such a large part of Fortnite that we really wanted to include this map. Not only can you train one of the most important skills in the game, you can have fun doing it. Let's face it, box fighting, trying to take walls, and making quick edits is a large part of what sets Fortnite apart from the other shooters. It's also a ton of fun if you learn how to do it well. This map is also a great alternative to the traditional 1v1 build battles. Just make sure that if you want the closest thing to a true box fighting experience, rather than just a build fight, try setting a rule so you guys can't build up more than 3 or 4 levels above your platform. The 6th course we picked is Rainbow Dropper 2.0, a fun mini game that gained popularity in Minecraft. As you might be able to tell by the name, this is Henwi's second version of the Rainbow Dropper, with even more levels and colors. The goal is straightforward, fall down to the bottom, dodging all the structures on the way down, and land on the launch pad. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. This course is not for the faint of heart, or those without patience. Unless you're a god gamer, which obviously we aren't, it's gonna take a decent amount of tries to pass each one of these 10 levels. On the bright side, each level is extremely colorful and nice to look at for the first couple of minutes at least. Plus, we love how such a unique minigame was able to make its way into Fortnite and can't wait to see what other unique creations come in the future. The last course we chose is this Area 51 themed Zone Wars. We figured we'd include this one so all the people who chicken out of storming Area 51 in real life have a place to go. The premise is that you spawn in, pick up your weapons, then drop onto the map and fight other players as the storm continuously pushes you back. This map feels like a more casual version of the traditional zone wars. Loadouts are randomized, to an extent, so it doesn't have the competitive integrity of a map with completely balanced loadouts. You still get some type of AR, shotgun, SMG, explosive or sniper, and healing. It's just randomized which item you get for each. For those looking for a more casual experience, this randomization actually adds to the fun of this course. We enjoyed the other choices they made for the settings as well, like each player starting with 500 of each mat. We found that infinite mats can be too much and cause players to just spam build the entire game. We like the 500 mat cap better because it's more than enough for an entire round, but you still have to make some decisions, like whether to use brick or metal in certain situations. Another thing we like about this map is the environment. There is enough natural cover to make the map feel full, but not too much that it's constantly getting in the way. The desert biome and military imagery pull together the Area 51 aesthetic nicely. There are also these tiny purple spots on the ground that launch you a good distance, adding some extra utility for players and making the map a little more fun and random. Thank you guys for watching this video. For those who are new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the right side of the screen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications for whenever a new guide shows up. You guys are great and we hope to keep making videos that you all like. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One and we're out. Peace.